uh, I talked about in a previous uh, video tutorial, I spoke about the Simpson uh, strong ties and they have a uh, add-in um, for Revit, which is a pretty nice feature. I'm not compensated in any way by Simpson strong ties. And in fact, this is <laughs> probably one of the Revit uh, one of the few Revit tutorials that you'll see on uh, YouTube that isn't monetized. So I don't think there's any ads that uh, you have to sit through for my uh, tutorials. Anyway, if we go up to the Simpson Strong Tie, then we have what's called a drawing finder. And I am looking for a two by 10. Let's see what comes up here. So that's um, could be an issue here. The last time I tried to do it this way, it didn't work out really well. HECS 10, what's oh, this one? Or another way to do it is simply Here we go. And I'm looking for, it'll tell me here. What? I already put it in. Uh, so it's already there. So it's really architecture component. It should, and it does. Yeah. Okay. So I've already popped it up, but you can see I'm looking for the HUS210. So I'll do it. HUS210 is the serial or model number. We'll search for that one. And there it is right there. Okay. And now let's go to the 3D view. And you see that we can sort of see it there. It looks like it's backwards. There we go. So now I've mounted it on the bond. And so what I will do next is I will locate it correctly on here. So the best way to do that would be if I take one of my sections, which is the uh, horizontal one, and say go to view. I'm just double checking to make sure my depth of field is good in, in, so that I'll be able to see this guy. And then we'll zoom in on it. There he is. So I think I could probably align him by the center of here and the center of here. Yeah. And then the bottom flange here is going to line up with this guy. So I'll come up here and there. That's it. There we go. There is my Simpson strong tie put in the right location. So now we'll go back to there. And this is copy, make sure the multiple is checked. And I'll just go from the midpoint, make sure I go straight across to the midpoint, straight across to the midpoint, and straight across to there. Now that should be it. I really should WT so I can see what I'm doing to make sure I don't discontinue. So that looks really good all the way across there. Now I'll flip it around. Modify. I'm going to click on something on the. Hopefully, I could click on something. There we go. Anything really, just so that Revit spins around that particular object as opposed to some weird place out in space that makes for a weird, weird or strange rotation. And then we'll do all of these. And then I'll pause the recording and do the rest. You don't need to watch <laughs> that. It's pretty redundant. Okay, so what is what do we have here? I'm just curious as to what I'm looking at. This is my structural framing. Okay, I wanted to make sure I had my two by tens in there. So it's in a component. So I can just say component and it'll show up. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. 
modify back to here. Now I want to flip it and see the other view. Flip the section, but look at this. I won't be able to see it because my depth of field isn't far enough. So I'll pull my depth of field back a little farther. I could have moved this section too. Um, now I'll be able to see it. And I can align by the center of these objects. And then I need to get this bottom flange there as well. Okay, so now I have this guy put in and I can simply copy across the rest of the way. Oh. The bond switches, so it has to be hosted, I believe. It has to be hosted. I can't just float this guy in air. So what that means is if I keep going straight across like this, this might be curious. Let's have a look and see what happens. If, if I keep coming this way, will it rehost this guy when the bond changes in location? Uh, it'll be farther back in this view. Let's see what happens. If Revit says, hey, you don't have a... Yeah, look what happens. It isn't. It doesn't have to be hosted. That's interesting. Um, it doesn't need to be hosted by the bond. So anyway, that's no good. Now, how would we fix that? Well, I guess I could come here and align it to here. All right. That should have worked. Let's see why it didn't. I want that guy to be way back here. All right. So. Let's click on it and say and see it might need a new host. Um, pick a new host, and we're gonna pick this guy. Oops, that didn't work either. Um, pick a new host. Here we go. Delete element. Okay, so I'm not sure why that was an issue. But I will be able to just architecture component and now I can place it here and then clean it up. But I'll pause the recording. You don't need to watch that entire sequence here. Okay, I like it. Uh, this is my first time using this new Simpson Strong Tie add in. And it made it a lot easier, I felt, uh, to put these. Uh, put these uh, joist hangers in. Uh, they have the hangers for double wide, triple wide. Um, and it was just easier using this search criteria here and going to the website, just looking, you know, searching for what I'm looking for. And I see a picture of it, I can get the uh, manufacturer number and then search for that in their program and get what I what I want here. So this worked out pretty nicely. I'm very happy with uh, putting in my uh, uh, joist hangers and uh, I think it worked out. It showed me a couple of spots like right here. I gotta go back in and fix that because why? Well, I didn't, for some reason I lost one. So, you know, it's a good argument can be made to say, look, you're going way overboard. Uh, in terms of the detail, but you know now I can tell you know I can do an extraction and I can uh, tell the contractor how many of these to buy. They don't have to go in and count them. Uh, somebody would have to go in and count them otherwise. So uh, or maybe they're just going to buy a case of them, take them from job to job, whatever's left over. But you know if they're going to price it out, I can tell them how many they need. So anyway, that's uh, the adding the Simpson strong ties to the uh, more choice.